Welcome back to Transfer Talk and today we've got a confirmed deal Formula E style. Brendan Hartley will join Dragon, j -Ox Dragon for season six of Formula E. No news on the second Dragon driver but Hartley now joins the list of other ex-Formula 1 drivers to join Formula E. Can he make as big an impact as guys like Jean-Eric Verne, Sebastian Buemi, Lucas de Grassi, Nelson Piquet Jr., Stoffel van Dorn even, and Felipe Massa? Hartley, he's had a pretty crazy career and Formula E, well, can he live up to the hype that currently surrounds his name and for Dragon, one of the few teams to not pick up a podium last season, is this the kind of driver they needed to really make that step up for season six? Let's have a look at this one then, because we've got a bit of time to discuss Brendan Hartley, because a lot of people felt last season in Formula One, when he finally got that break, finally got a chance for a full season in Formula One, they felt he was a little bit unlucky he didn't get another chance in 2019. The team opted instead to go with Danny Kvyat, brought him back into Formula 1, and also went for Alex Albon, who at the time had been axed from the Red Bull Young Driver programme, but brought him back in to replace Brendan Hartley. Well, I've gone back, and I've looked at the Drivers' Championship, and I, uh, I say this quite a bit of the time, to be honest with you, because I think a lot of people... And I, I hate to generalise and say casual fans, but I think especially casual fans in this instance, look at the Formula 1 Championship and say points, if, if you're not getting enough points, then you should be axed. And while that is a factor, it doesn't tell the full story. However, on just pure points, last season, Brendan Hartley finished behind Lance Stroll in a Williams. Hartley finished 19th on four points. Sergei Sorokin was the only man to finish below him on one single point for Williams. And Lance Stroll picked up six points for Williams. Now at face value, that's not the best record. Stroll picked up points in two races. Hartley picked up points in three races, but that was only two tenths positions at Azerbaijan, which is a pretty crazy race, and Italy. He also finished behind Stroll in Italy. And also in the USA, he got a P9, his best ever result in Formula One. Formula One for Brendan Hartley, a difficult tale. Joined the Red Bull programme all the way back in 2010 and was trying to forge his way into Toro Rosso somewhere. Tested for Red Bull, tested for Toro Rosso, but never got a full-time drive. So he had to give his talents elsewhere. He went to the World Endurance Championship and get this, won the whole thing twice. This guy performed so, so well in other categories that Red Bull and Toro Rosso thought, yeah, we're going to have to bring him back. And as I just mentioned, it wasn't quite the fairy tale return or the, <laughs> I say return, fairy tale start, I suppose, in the end for Brendan Hartley. But now he moves to Formula E. He tested last season for Porsche. Porsche joining Formula E this season. Yes, we, we had a debate last time out in a Formula E video. I'm going to call it Porsche. Because the way I say Porsche apparently sounds wrong. So we've had that debate before, so apologies there. But Porsche, they're coming into Formula E next season. And whilst the team signed Neil Yarny all the way back in, I believe, March of this year, their second driver was a little bit of an anomaly. No announcements, but Hartley was testing their Season 6 car. So it was almost pretty nailed on that he was going to remain with the team. However, we got the news a couple of weeks ago that Andre Lotterer, the man who raced alongside Jean-Eric Werner to Cheetah, is moving to Porsche. So that completely threw away Brendan Hartley's chance. And to be honest with you, and if you caught my video discussing the whole entire Formula E grid for next season, when it came to Dragon, I was a little bit stuck. Because Maximilian Gunter, arguably Rookie of the Year, went under... So much, I was going to say craziness, but the fact that come each race weekend, he didn't know he was going to be racing. Got replaced by Felipe Nasser for a couple of rounds. It really looked like he was in a bad situation. He then came back for the Rome E really impressed that weekend, despite crashing in the early stages of the race, which was pretty chaotic. But ever since then, pushed on and on and on. Sniffs of podiums into the Super Bowl shootout a few times as well. This guy was mega, considering the uncertainty going into each race weekend. So it makes sense for the team to keep him. However, 
yes, the driver transfer market is always crazy in, in every sport, but Formula E at the moment, even more so with Lotterer's move, because it now looks like De Costa is going to Tachita, and it looks like Gunter is going to go to BMW. So it looks like Dragon had a seat, but not only that, because of Gunther's impressive performances, this might be a little bit harsh, but destroying Jose Maria Lopez in the second half of the season, it looks like even Lopez isn't too sure about continuing with the team. So at the moment, it looks very likely that both seats are available. So Hartley, today confirmed for one of those seats, makes sense to me. Makes sense. Okay, he's not the youngest driver. Okay, he's not the quickest driver and didn't prove himself in Formula 1 to be one of the best. But even saying that, was Sebastian Buemi one of the best in Formula 1? Lucas de Grassi only got a full season chance in the Virgin team. You know, that's not particularly impressive. He didn't really have a chance to prove his abilities. John Eric Vern never got a chance at a top team. And yet they've gone on to do such amazing things in Formula E, could Hartley be the same? Not only that, Hartley has proved himself in countless other series, so why can't it be Formula E? He brings that experience that potentially, if both Lopez and Gunter leave, that could be key. And that gives them a chance to sign a young driver, to take someone from Formula 2, like they did with Gunter, who perhaps didn't impress in his first year of Formula 2, but they took a chance and boy did it pay off come the end of the season. So they could go with someone like Nick DeVries. They could even go and get Nelson Piquet Jr., world champion of Formula E season 1, who hasn't currently got a seat. They could take a whole host of drivers, younger down or even just from different categories because Hartley, whilst he hasn't driven officially in Formula E before, he's had that full year of testing with Porsche and that will help him going into this season. But he will be a rookie. And that is something that they're going to have to consider with their second driver. Because typically in Formula E, and we saw it this season with HWA, having two rookies, especially early on in the season, can hurt a team. Even Maximilian Gunter, those first couple of races, Lopez was on the edge of a podium in the first race of the season. Gunter, first couple of races, was in the wall probably a few more times than you would hope for. Again end of the season that completely flipped on its head but I think Hartley's a sensible choice for them for Brendan though is this a sensible choice for him I think so as well I don't think that, I mean as much as people and I, Brendan Hartley seems like a lovely guy but is there a chance of him getting back to Formula One I don't see that happening He's replaced Fernando Alonso with Toyota in the World Endurance Championship, which you'd probably assume they're going to win again, Toyota, considering their dominance last year. So he's doing well on that front. He's got a bit of spare time. Why not go to Formula E? And looking at the seats available, it's getting more and more difficult to find one. So for a team like Dragon, where potentially he could be a team leader, I, I think that makes sense for him. I think that all adds up. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. But I also love your thoughts on who's going to take that second seat. Because Lopez, has he impressed that much in Formula E? He got another chance this year with Dragon, despite D'Ambrosio getting the team's podium, only podium the season before. D'Ambrosio went to Mahindra. People hoped, the team hoped, that Lopez could really push on this year. But it just didn't quite work out for him. Gunter, who seemed like the star in the team... It looks like he's moving on. So there is a seat there. So maybe we could see another Formula 1 driver or ex-Formula 1 driver go there. Or we could see someone a little bit different. Juan Manuel Correa, perhaps, from Formula 2, the American driver. I think they'd quite like the idea of that. There's a whole host of drivers. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Obviously, plenty of Formula E transfers coming through at the moment. So we're going to be doing plenty of transfer talks. It's also the Formula 1 summer break. So silly season. Well, it's in full swing, isn't it? I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you're new to the channel and you've got this far, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.